next time, baby. Or maybe not. Terrence Howard signed on for a three-picture deal when he was cast as Rhodey in Iron Man. When the movie became a breakout success, Marvel tried to renegotiate Terrence's contract to allow for Robert Downey Jr. to make more money. As a result, Terrence took the money he earned up front from the three-film contract and ran. It's a one-off. Actors coming and going from roles in major motion pictures is actually something that happens a lot more often than we think. How leading actors are paid out is really on a contract-to-contract -contract basis. Whether an actor is recast during filming or their character is cut from the film entirely, they generally see at least some of their proposed cut and it leads to one heck of an interesting story. Is there a spell in the Harry Potterverse that could just erase some of its franchise's biggest names from being controversial? Accio Contro Obliviate. No, uh, worth a shot. The four fans of the Fantastic Beast series were recently treated to the news that following the ongoing reports between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's domestic disputes and Johnny's reported alcohol abuse, Why is the rum always gone? Johnny was asked by the head honchos over at Warner Bros to step away from his role as Grindelwald. This may sound like some pretty rough news, but it's a win-win. People who now hate Johnny can rejoice as they could comfortably watch the film knowing he won't be around, while fans of Johnny could at least find some solace knowing that Johnny was reportedly paid for up to 10 million for the role while only having to film one scene before being asked to step away. Not many things can kill Superman. There's uh, kryptonite, red sun radiation, and a bad year at the box office. Ironically titled Superman Lives was going to be a reboot of the Man of Steel franchise with Tim Burton directing and Nicolas Cage set to be the star. Oh my. <clears throat> Things were getting real interesting with the Superman reboot. Concept art was ready, sets were being built, Nicolas Cage had done several costume tests. Until Warner Brothers pulled the plug on the project only three weeks before filming due to a bad summer at the box office. Nicolas Cage earned a rumored $20 million up front on the project that never actually came to be. The film would have followed the Death of Superman storyline, as well as featuring Brainiac, massive spiders, and couples therapy. On top of receiving one hefty bag of money, Nicolas Cage got to voice the character in Teen Titans Go. Well, it is important to have dreams, I guess. And who knows what multiverse shenanigans Flash gets into in his upcoming flick. We already know that Tim Burton's Batman verse is going to be revived in it. One of the reasons the MCU has been able to consistently stay on top of the box office is because of how meticulously everything is planned in each of the films. Everything is set in stone years ahead of time. Avengers Endgame introduced Lexi Rabe as the adorable Morgan Stark and fans loved it. I love you 3000. But she wasn't the only Morgan Stark intended to be in the film. 13 Reasons Why star Katherine Langford was cast in an undisclosed role for the movie. Before the film's release, theories were a buzz about who she would be playing until it was released and nothing. It was only later that we found out an alternate ending to the film where after Tony snapped his fingers, he came face to face with a grown up Morgan Stark in the soul world as a way of saying a final goodbye. That sound confusing to you? Because it did to test screening audiences. Introducing another Morgan Stark in the same movie that introduced the character was an inherently odd concept, and it took away from the pacing of the hero's sacrifice, especially with the face of the recast being someone so recognizable. As we talk about actors who were paid to not be in a movie, it turns out having all the money in the world can't save your career. The start of the Me Too movement revealed that Kevin Spacey had non-consensual relations with an underage Anthony Rapp as well as several others. While filming had concluded on his upcoming film, tensions over at Sony skyrocketed with only three weeks set between the allegations and the film's scheduled AFI Fest premiere. Reshoots were quickly ordered by director Ridley Scott, with Christopher Plummer filling in for the role of J. Paul Getty. Totaling $10 million and taking an almost record-breaking nine days of filming to almost completely reshoot the movie, the fix-up proved to be the right choice as Christopher Plummer's performance was nominated for both a Golden Globe and an Academy Award. Chances are you know Michael J. Fox specifically due to Back to the Future. It was the perfect role for a young actor to step out into Hollywood and prove themselves as an energetic and quirky actor. It would be a darn shame if anyone genuinely believed they were going to play the role of Marty McFly for months on end. Great Scott. Time travel, as far as we are currently aware, is not possible. But that didn't stop Back to the Future from resetting its filming back three weeks when Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis decided that Eric Stoltz wasn't the Marty that they had envisioned. The production team originally wanted Michael J. Fox in the role, but due to filming family ties and Teen Wolf, he had no room in his schedule. In that time, Eric Stoltz auditioned, prepped for the role, and filmed most of it. Michael's schedule became a little more free leading up to the firing of Eric even though the picture had mostly wrapped. The production team decided Eric was taking the role a little too seriously and didn't bring the comedic edge they were expecting from the leading man. 
Director's cuts, extended editions, holiday specials. If Hollywood can repackage its movie with an additional two minutes of footage and ship it out to a Walmart under a special edition banner, they will take full advantage of the additional sales. Why do you think audiences will be stupid enough to swallow this? Not sure this level of curiosity is cute coming from a middle-aged man. While seeing some added scenes to our most beloved films as a welcome addition, we typically only get a handful of added or edited moments, and these extended editions are mostly superficial. Well, that is with the exception of the X-Men Days of Future Past Rogue Cut. Yes, I know she technically did make it into the film for three seconds, but Anna Paquin filmed a heck of a lot more footage for the role. The Rogue Cut features an additional 17 minutes worth of footage, mostly focusing on replacing Rogue in Kitty Pride's role, with a handful of big budget action scenes added in as well. If you haven't seen this X-Men flick since its release, the row cut has pretty much become the definitive edition of the film. Saying The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a little crowded may be a bit of an understatement. Electro, Rhino, Green Goblin, Felicia Hardy, the guy that was supposed to become the Vulture, other Green Goblin, pretty much every scene in this movie is an introduction to a new character that would have been fleshed out in the planned continuation of the series, and uh, we know how that turned out. Ah, uh, so... With Gwen Stacy having made a teeny tiny bump in her head at the end of the film, the producers over at Sony knew they had to have a new love interest enter the frame for future installments. Shailene Woodley was cast in the role of Mary Jane. Leaks came out in filming showing at least three scenes of MJ in the flick, and then nothing. Just like plans for The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and the Sinister Six spin-off, she completely vanished from the plans of Sony. No, that is not footage of Sebastian in the upcoming live-action Little Mermaid. What the hell are you? This was early footage shot for Predator. Even wilder than the costume is the man inside of it. I bet you wouldn't guess that this was Jean-Claude Van Damme. Fresh off the boat from Brussels in his first major American production, Jean-Claude was ecstatic at the idea of working as the titular Predator alongside action juggernaut Arnold Schwarzenegger. That is until he arrived on set and put on this horrific suit. Horrific for the wrong reasons. It was only red so the editors could make it invisible in post, but Jean had absolutely no idea that that was the case. Needless to say, things got off to a rocky start. The rest of Jean's experience on set could be an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. The original costume design had him breathing through a tube in the alien's neck. He reportedly broke a $20,000 predator head, and then he got fired by producer Joel Silver after refusing to do a stunt jump that he deemed unsafe which seemed to be a good decision for him as the following stuntman reportedly broke his legs during the fall. Ryan Gosling is one of the most versatile actors out there, being both funny enough to star in comedies and dashing enough to lead romance and action flicks. Casting Ryan in your film seems to be a fairly safe bet. Following The Lord of the Rings and King Kong, Peter Jackson was set to direct an adaptation of The Lovely Bones, which would have seen Ryan as the role of Jack Salmon, the grieving father of Saoirse Ronan. Ryan originally felt uneasy when he was cast in the role, fearing that he was a little too young for it, but still went full throttle with his transformation. Ryan gained over 60 pounds for the role, forcing himself to drink melted ice cream whenever he was thirsty, just to ensure that he would fit his mental image of the character. This being an image in his head that was never actually proved by Peter Jackson. When Big Boy Ryan showed up for rehearsals, Peter Jackson was shocked to say the least as he really didn't like how Ryan envisioned the character to look like. Not even a Marvel diet can help you shed 60 pounds in a month, which is what Ryan would have had to do to get back into the regular shape, leading to his dismissal from the film. Yeah, I don't think you hear what I'm saying. You're fired. No, I mean, that's what you're saying, but it's not what you mean. What you mean is... You're fired. There's not many silver linings here. You got a bit of a check and maybe he enjoyed eating all that food? Contract negotiations could be brutal. What you think you're worth versus what a production company thinks you deserve is a balancing act to say the least. Marcus Chong allegedly signed a multi-picture deal with Warner Brothers for the Matrix films, and in that time between the original and the Matrix Reloaded, Marcus decided he was worth more than a million dollars instead of the $400,000 offered. Instead of accepting the absolute tank load of money that is $400,000, Marcus would make it a point to ensure all parties involved knew how angry he was. He crashed the sequel's press junkets, sent death threats to the film's producers and directors, which led him to getting arrested. Marcus has still not let the situation go, starting Hashtag MarcusGate, a campaign on his YouTube channel accompanied by a 45-minute documentary trying to explain his side of the ordeal. He could have just taken the extra bit of money he earned up front for the two sequels he had nothing to do with and lived off that, but instead he had to use it all for legal fees. 
When talking about things being switched around last second, of course we need to mention Emperor Palpatine in the original cut of Episode 5 being swapped out for Ian McDermott, along with Haydenkin being added into Episode 6. These are by far the most interesting cases of actors being cut and replaced and it leads to us thinking, who else could be digitally etched out of film history? Or better yet, just because we can, does that mean we should?